Hi, my name's Chi, and today I'm going to show you how to create a custom motion builder facial rig. Um, basically, word of warning, this isn't a, a, a basic tutorial, so I'd expect you to know how to use a motion builder, um, how to uh, clean up the motion capture data that you've got, um, etc. Know the basics of the constraints. Um, just the general sort of uh, things that you do in your day-to-day -day job as an animator um, at your workplace or at home. Um, so, um, why did I create this uh, rig? Well, the main reason for this um, and, and some of the, the companies that I worked previously for, um, you clean up your motion capture data, uh, transfer that uh, your data into Maximaya, and then from Max and Maya, you got to uh, create your facial animation on top of uh, the animation that you imported, and then export it back out, um, back into Motion Builder, the the, the face part, uh, and basically, uh, yeah, it can, it can be uh, a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, so, or else, actually, you could use. Um, it's not because Motion Builder doesn't have a facial uh, system. Um, you can uh, let's have a look. So, for instance, if you wanted, um, uh, there we go. Um, so this is uh, Motion Builder's um, built-in um, facial system. Um, it's not the friendliest system to use. So if you want to animate the eyes, you got to uh, animate individual parts uh, like so. Uh, with all these slide bars, um, as you can see down here, uh, for this current rig, this is uh, all the motions um, that you could use, but in slide bar form. Uh, or, uh, once we get this going, once we get um, this built up, you can animate here, which is uh, much easier, much nicer. Um, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, you know, I mean, once you've actually created it, let's create, select the control group. Um, we can reset it back to zero as well, um, and you know, get get your your basic sort of like uh, 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 initial pose. So uh, that's the um, introduction out of the way. So for uh, the next part of this tutorial, um, I expect that you'd already um, got a character that's uh, rigged up, uh, ready for animation, including the facial um, skinning as well um, for them. Um, so the and basically uh, what you need to do next is uh, create these boxes. Um, uh, I mean, these boxes and text was created in Max, um, so you can create it in Maya, or if you don't have Max and Maya, uh, you can go into your asset browser, select a plane, drop it in, uh, scale it. Uh, obviously, I'm doing this quickly. You want that at 90 degrees rotation. Um, you, know, you can create a box like that, or if you really wanted to um, create something like what I have made, then um, you, know, you can basically do this. You kind of get what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do. Um, I want to actually finish this uh, strange uh, box off, but you know, if you want to take the time to create it in, in my uh, Sorry, in Motion Builder, you can. Uh, anyway, uh, let's skip to this file. Uh, so I won't save that. Oh, no. I've now opened this file from a uh, Max export into an XBX, uh, FBX format. Um, basically, within this file, we've got the text. So you got like a uh, Converge, left brow, right brow, eyes, etc. Here, um, so basically, this is just to tell you what each of these boxes are. Um, the, so, so for instance, if you had the tongue controller, you can put that on top of like one of the boxes. Um, I tend to just use uh, 
put this uh, input the set of boxes that I want to create uh, and then basically lay it out in motion builder um, so first off let's hide the text um, so for instance if we wanted to create um, uh, yeah like a tongue controller here um, we would insert um, a set browser go to elements uh, drop in a null object um, basically you want to uh, this null object is basically uh, to show your center point um, so for instance it would be a line to translation because this file was imported through Max uh, what you want to do is um, just do a line to transform because in Max uh, Z is up and in Motion Builder Y is up so it can cause some uh, issues later um, so we will copy and paste that and create a separate one. So the, the reason for the null objects, as I was saying before, is if you center it to the object, it goes to the center. But if you want the, uh, you can offset it so that that would be the um, uh, center point. Uh, align uh, the null to your object. So parent that. And uh, I'll parent this one. Um, next you want to make a, a control object uh, you can use markers um, which is good if you want to uh, quickly hide things uh, I use spheres uh, it really doesn't make that much odds it's just whatever you feel comfortable with uh, using to move the um, move your controller around so doing this pretty quickly again align uh, transform copy and paste and then align transform all and then link this to your null object parent and parent again okay so um, the reason why we're pairing uh, uh, parenting uh, the sphere or your controller to uh, those uh, null objects is if you go into your local translation it's all set at zero, so if you move it off, off center, um, and you want it back to where it was, you can just type in zero zero zero, and then that will reset it. Uh, I mean, that also goes with multiple objects. So if you have two, you can actually change the uh, back to zero zero zero. So it goes back to the local coordinates of zero of its null object. Now that we have uh, this parent, these parented, uh, we select the um, controller and basically want to constrain it within the, the bounding area. Uh, so if you go into properties, uh, degree of freedom, transform, uh, maximum and minimum uh, of the translations opened up and have every single box ticked. What that means is uh, nothing can move because everything's set at zero it's zero of its parent um, object which is a null object which is at zero 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 so uh, we want to go on the x-axis on a positive direction um, to the right so we would go minimum x uh, x is zero and if we open this up and the maximum of x we want at 5.4 which is the size of uh, my box so now what you see is I can go left and right and basically I can't go any further I can't go up or down um, obviously we want to do the same thing for um, uh, this one here so I'll quickly turn on the um, degree of freedom um, so for this one I know the fact that it was set at uh, on the X I want to be able from the null object I want to go minus 2.6 and positive 2.6 and that will give me so that's um, minus 2.6 and positive 2.6 and um, here we want to go on the Y axis this is why I didn't um, link up previously uh, that I, I didn't go um, transform and rotation linkage um, because then I would have to use the, the uh, Z axis instead so um, just just for myself and making it a little bit easier on the Y we go minus uh, 2.6 um, downwards 
and we want to go uh, 2.6 upwards. So now, if I've done this right, this should stay within that box area. Um, and obviously setting that back at zero will put it back into the center. With some of the other controllers, um, I won't recreate uh, everything again. So for instance, uh, I'm just going to show you where I would place this on um, this type of box, which is a slightly smaller one. So on this, uh, you'd only go left, right, or up. Or for these ones, uh, this box type here that I created, uh, I place it either left or right of it. So you can only go up, down, or in this case, uh, left. Now, um, with that bit great, the, the reason why um, you would actually do um, just one box for now is you don't need to recreate all these constraints and um, uh, degree of freedom uh, and Parrington. Uh, so for this box here, if I spacebar and right click, you'd be able to select every object. Uh, you can copy and paste that and basically you can make as many copies um, of it as you will need for however you rearrange your layout. Um, obviously, if I go back to the uh, settings and switch on the text, you know you can basically lay it out like so. Uh, actually, we'll change the camera. One of the reasons why um, my text is black is Motion Builder used to have a used to have a lighter sort of. Um, background, open this perspective, we're going to front view, sorry. Um, so you can actually see the text there and the box was a little bit greyed out. So okay, so you just basically lay it out how you want. Now in the true Blue Peter fashion, I'm going to open up a file. Uh, here's one I created earlier. Um, open that up. Uh, I'll just quickly change the camera once again. So I want the front view lighter so everyone can see the text. Right, so the way I've laid it out for mind you, you obviously you can lay it out how you want, whatever of a suit you've got the hair system uh, that I created uh, look for the hair so we've got the brows uh, the cheek squeeze the eyelids and your eyes converge eye trim etc uh, you want your mouth sync uh, emotes as things like smiles etc um, and then basically uh, basically having your uh, mouth uh, stick out and go in and shift side to side is if front, back, left and right basically um, and then you've got the lip rolls and uh, the, the upper and lower lip uh, so you can fine tune your animation sneers, um, uh, basically your tongue motion uh, so for instance this would be uh, up, down, left um, left and right and then oh no, uh, sorry so it would be up, down for the tongue and then backwards and forwards because I've actually got left and right over here. Um, it was just the way I set it up. I mean, you can change that around if you like. Um, so from there, if I open up the character file, so my little Aaron character, open him up, don't see. <clears throat> now that our character's loaded up, we want to merge in the box. Uh, the controllers, uh, so that's the one that I created earlier. Right, so uh, let me quickly change the color again. So more visible. Right, so um, I normally put these into sets, so the boxes are in one set, so I don't want to be able to pick or translate or rotate them or scale them in any way or form, so I can't select them now. And uh, so now I'll select all of these objects, and I'm going to create a new set called controllers. So now I can actually select the controllers all together in one go. Um, I mean, you can create different sets for 
different uh, parts of the uh, uh, face, if you like. Um, so here we go. So what we need to do is characterize your character. Um, so we go into Asset Browser, Character, and characterize them. Drag the um, character object into the hips and characterize and we want to make him a biped so now the character is characterized obviously you have to have the, the bone names um, identical to uh, what you'd have in motion builder uh, but I'd expect you'd know how to do that already so this concludes the first part of a tutorial um, hope you haven't fallen asleep or you know uh, turned me off yet uh, if you're still watching, um, the next part would be on uh, the constraint system and how we can um, use the Motion Builder facial uh, rig and um, build it into a custom rig system uh, here. Um, and I hope to uh, see you in the second part. Thank you for watching.